Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of the basic Fusion 360 tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering uh, some of the sculpting tools for creating more complex geometry. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to actually insert some reference into my file this time. I'm going to insert a real life object. You can also insert a sketch from your notebook, something you've scanned in uh, as a reference. And I'll insert that by going to the um, insert tab here in the design menu and selecting uh, canvas and canvas is gonna let me place an image on a plane or face of an object you can insert that into one of your your planes in your origin uh, on an empty file or you can actually insert a uh, sketch or reference onto the face of an object that's already in your scene so I'm gonna select canvas and then I'm gonna go and choose a file from my computer so I prepared two files here that are linked in the video description uh, they are for a computer mouse which I'm gonna try to use as reference I'm gonna select First, the top view of the mouse. I'm going to click open, and it's going to prompt me to select a face. I'm going to select the top face, or the sorry, the top plane of my file, uh, and then I'm going to drag the uh, scaling slider just to make you know things a little more visible. And you don't need to scale it to any specific size just yet. Make sure that you are selecting display through so that the um, canvas will be visible uh, through objects and you'll be able to reference it. Uh, and you can play with the opacity here and it's set by default uh, to 50 and you can play with that to your preference. Uh, you can also flip the uh, canvases around. So I'm gonna just say okay. Uh, and um, the mouse that I'm trying to draw, uh, I know for a fact I looked up that uh, the size of this particular mouse I'm going to use as reference uh, is 100 millimeters long. So I'm actually going to calibrate the canvas that I have so that it's exactly 100 millimeters long. It doesn't really matter if you've cropped your image like I did to, to the edge. Sometimes it helps to line up uh, several canvases to do so, but you don't need to do that. Uh, you expand the canvases folder. Uh, you'll see the canvas I just inserted. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say calibrate. And then I'm going to go to my view cube and select top to go to my top view. And I'm going to click on two different places here on my canvas. Uh, I'm going to click on the very top and the very bottom of my mouse. Uh, about. So I'm going to say that it's 100 millimeters. Uh, distance. So this is going to scale my canvas to that uh, size approximately. So if you have a, a set of technical drawings, for example, you can blow this up by actually uh, just knowing one of the dimensions uh, in your drawing and doing this a little bit more precisely. Uh, but generally, I am in the ballpark of scale where I need to be. Um, if I rotate my view, now I have this, this canvas there. It's not selectable. It's just there for me to use as reference. And I can use this with the uh, modeling tools that we've uh, learned so far, extruding tools, etc. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert a new canvas, which represents the side view of this mouse. I'm going to go to Insert Canvas. And I'm going to go to my computer to pick up a new file. I'm going to pick a side view this time. And I'm going to select the perpendicular plane to the one I just did. And now I can scale this up to uh, fit the, the right width, or I can just insert it as is and recalibrate. Uh, here, since both my images are the same width, I can pretty much scale it up to be uh, the size that I need. And I can also move it up so it sits at the, the base of the file. So if I rotate now, I have both a side and a top reference. As you can see, my uh, images are not lined up in the right orientation. I can just hit the horizontal flip button here in my canvas contextual menu and now I have them nice and lined up for me to do my modeling so I'm going to click OK. Uh, next step, I'm actually going to insert a form, uh, a base form that I'm going to uh, model a lot like you would model a, a block of putty uh, and shape it into uh, the form that you desire. So I'm going to say create form here in the solid menu of the design environment. And you can start with, with different basic objects. Uh, we can start with a box, you can start with a plane, you can start with a cylinder, you can start with a sphere, a quad ball as they call it here, or just with a simple face. Um, I'm actually gonna start with a box. When I click box, it'll prompt me for a plane to use as the base plane of my box. I'm gonna select this plane. And now I'm going to get this crosshair because it's going to be prompted. Uh, I'm going to be prompted to select uh, an origin, so the center of my box. So if I click here on the center, I'll be able to stretch out um, the footprint of my box. Now, 
I know for a fact that this mouse is 100 millimeters long by 60 millimeters wide, the, the one I'm going to use as reference. So I'm actually going to type that. I'm going to type uh, 60, which is the width, and I'll see the box shrink to 60. And then I'm going to hit the tab key, uh, not enter. If you hit enter, you're going to just uh, exit this tool. I'm going to um, tap on tab, and then I'm going to enter the length of the mouse. And I'm going to tap tab once more, and I'm going to wait for a couple seconds. Uh, and then it's going to prompt me for the height. Now, I do know that the height for this mouse is 40 millimeters. So I'm going to enter 40, and I'm going to get a box that is roughly the size of the mouse that I'm trying to model. Now, the, the next thing I can select is I can select the number of faces or the number of subdivisions uh, on each side of my box, lengthwise, widthwise, heightwise. I can change that to be uh, different numbers. So for example, for uh, the height of faces, I'm going to go with um, four. So this is correct. I'm going to choose to have six uh, faces lengthwise, and I'm going to have six faces um, in this direction. And you'll almost always want to have a pair number of uh, faces, particularly in your um, front view. And you'll see why in a second. So. Uh, I done, I've done this exercise before, just before starting this video recording. Uh, so I, I have the, the number of faces set already correct. So you might have to change these. You might have to go here into the box menu and change this number for length faces, width faces, and height faces to be uh, matching what I have here. Um, now, one thing before you hit OK is you want to actually uh, create a symmetry line. A symmetry line is something that um, lets you mirror changes that you do on one side of the object to the other. So you only need to modify one side of the object and your object will be symmetric. So I'm going to choose mirror and then it's going to let me choose different uh, symmetry axes. Uh, I can choose, for example, width symmetry would mean that every change I make to the back of the mouse would you know, be exactly the same in the front, which is not desirable. I can do height symmetry and it's going to choose um, uh, align here and, and do changes to the top just like in the bottom or length symmetry or I can actually choose all three and work just in one single quadrant of this um, object and then it's going to change in every single corner. The only thing I need for now is to have uh, the length symmetry activated. So uh, the operation is going to be a new body and I'm going to tap OK. You can see that the um, length symmetry being portrayed here by this yellow line. So any changes that I do on one side are going to be um, be done on the other side. You can always come back and modify and deactivate and delete symmetry by going to the symmetry tool. And you can clear symmetry to uh, deactivate it in case you are done, you're done with symmetrical changes and you want to make asymmetrical changes. You can just deactivate it or you can add a new type of symmetry as you are working. Um, the next tool that we're going to use um, is here in the Modify tab, and it's just called Edit Form, and by default, it's actually the tool that gets added here to the top of this bar. So um, this tool lets you move um, points, edges, and faces around fairly easily. So I'm going to tap on the Modify Form, um, and here you can change several things. You can change uh, the way you transform things, uh, you can move things around, you can just translate them, you can rotate them, uh, you can scale them, or if you choose the multi-tool, which is selected by default, uh, you will get to do all these things simultaneously by using these controls on screen. Um, the next thing I want you to look at is this, this thing called selection filter. So here you can actually choose... Um, if you, if you do faces, you can just select individual faces to move. So if I select one face here and then I can actually move this face, uh, you'll see the face on the other side change symmetrically, by the way. I can modify individual faces and push and pull the material like that. Um, if I do this again, sorry, I exited the tool. Uh, if I choose um, edge and I pull on an edge, I can actually move just that. You see that the, the change in, in the geometry is different. And actually, if you um, double click on an edge, you will select an entire loop of, of edges. And you can also hit the scale tool, for example, and scale in XY, just affecting this one edge that is uh, selected. I'm going to undo this change. 
or just uh, vertex or points. You can just choose these different vertices here and uh, move those around. And all these changes perform completely different things on your form. Okay, so uh, I'm going to head to the, the side view here, the right view, and I'll get a clear picture of um, the form that I'm trying to achieve and the form that I have here on screen. So I'm going to go and just start modifying things. And usually my go-to thing is to select vertices, select vertex as a tool. Uh, but you're welcome to experiment with some, some people really like moving edges. Some people really like dealing with faces directly as a way to um, work on these things. And this is just all up to you. Uh, your, it's your workflow. So I'm going to choose vertices and I'm going to keep the transform tool on multi. Uh, and I'm going to start here at the very back. I'm actually going to select this uh, group of vertices here, and I'm going to scale vertically like that. And then I'm going to move. And as you move, you see this This is quite a fluid uh, workspace here. And uh, it's a lot of back and forth. You sort of go in, do you know, perform a change. Uh, and this change will affect things you just did because it's going to pull on all of these vertices uh, all together. Uh, and you might end up with a desired result, or you might have to go back and uh, edit this this row again, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And um, see here, I can go and edit this. Now I can go ahead and move this row around. And I'll slowly start shaping this object to have the lines that I need it to have. Now you'll see that, that I have this gray um, stripe here on my mouse. And I'm actually trying to um, make that a single row. So you'll see me try and do that as I work. Uh, and you see I'll change this one line, and then this line here has moved. Uh, and often it's worth it to actually go through the uh, entire row before you head back and, and make any more changes, because that usually will affect um, the, the vertices at the very back as this line gets pulled back and forth. Now here for the front, I'm going to go ahead and just grab all of these and do vertical scale. And I'm going to pull down. And then I'm going to pull this back, like so. And this, you know, making this process intuitive is going to take you uh, some time. But I think it's quite fun to um, try and, and, and starting to, to line up all of these lines, particularly if you have an interesting um, object you've sketched and you're trying to copy those 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 lines that you've envisioned and and maybe these lines and profiles are quite specific all right so i got that bottom half uh looking okay now i'm going to pay some attention here to the the top side i'm going to start playing with uh this form here uh, i'm going to have to pull this way up actually Now, you can spend many, many hours uh, inside this tool making things just perfect. I'm going to try to get you know, 80% there for the sake of your patience. So I'll try to roughly get to this shape. And what I actually want to do with this mouse is I want to show you a couple of other tools. Um, after we've created this basic form. So I'm just going to use this uh, as a reference, and I'm going to go ahead and modify the design, if you will, of this mouse a little bit to go ahead and take advantage of those tools. So uh, we'll also, we also don't need to be 100% exact this time around. So maybe we'll do some fast forwarding here to uh, get you to the end result. You, you kind of get the picture of where I'm going with these tools. And 
And again, you might have to go back and forth. Um, changes that I make now here, uh, if I move my uh, vertices in two axes, um, are actually going to interfere with the changes that I just made um, a few seconds ago on the side view. So I might have to actually jump back and forth to, to get that to work. Okay, that looks close enough for the purposes of this demo, and it's, as far as I'm going to take the reference to the Logitech mouse. So the next thing I want to show you um, is how to deal with some edge treatments you can do to um, objects here. So I'm going to click OK to um, affect all of my changes, and I'm going to turn off the canvases here so I can see the object without the canvas uh, interrupting there in the back. So uh, I want to actually make this geometry a little less soft. So for example, there's going to be edges where you're going to want to create a little bit of a crease. And it's actually a tool called Crease that you can use for this purpose. So you can actually select uh, an, edges, uh, an edge or a group of edges by double clicking, let's say, this loop here that represents the top of this uh, sort of gray stripe we were, we were modeling. Um, and I'm going to go to Modify and select this tool that's called Crease. So by clicking on crease uh, and then tapping OK, I'm actually going to crease this particular uh, line here. It's going to become a hard uh, fold there on, on, on the surface. So you can use this creatively to achieve very different results. And I'm going to apply the same tool um, sorry, to this row of edges here. So I'm going to go to modify again and say crease. Tap on OK, and you see the, the, the big change that that makes here on, uh, on my form. Now, as you do this, as you crease your object, you'll see that some things get a little moved around. You might want to come back and do a tiny bit of editing, let's say here on this back side. You can go back to your um, Modify tool, Edit Form, and do a little bit of uh, moving around. Okay, that should work. So when you've done all your modifications, and there's a lot of other tools in here that we won't touch in this particular demo, like uh, giving you the ability to create holes and gaps, and also uh, the ability to extrude particular faces. For example, um, if I go and select the, um, sorry, here, right, create the extrude tool, you can actually select uh, faces and group of groups of faces and extrude new forms here out of, uh, what you have, you can connect two different forms. You can do all sorts of things here in the uh, form environment. But once you're done with your changes, you can go and click Finish Form. And this is going to attempt to uh, convert this into a solid. And sometimes it might fail. Sometimes it'll be successful. It depends on whether there's self-intersecting um, geometry or not, because it, it can't have self-intersecting geometry and be a solid. So I'm going to click Finish Form. In my case, I didn't get any warnings. If you do, you might have to go back and edit points. There might be points that are crossing each other and generating some kind of uh, intersection. So this is going to be the um, form here for my mouse-like object that I am modeling. Um, and now the cool thing about this is it's turned, it's turned it into a solid. And you can use all kinds of solids tools. For example, let's say I want to cut a completely flat bottom because I have a pretty soft bottom here. And I can start uh, a new sketch here on the right plane. And I could just go ahead and add a rectangle. I can dimension it to be an exact height, an exact location. In my case, I'm just going to drop one here to show you. And I can extrude this form. I can select it. I'm going to tap E for extrude. I'm going to drag here to be, uh, let's say, 50 millimeters. And I'm going to choose here in the direction drop box to, be, uh, to have a symmetric extrusion, so 50 millimeters on each side, and that should cut material throughout the form. And now I have a flat bottom. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to shell this object to give it a uniform wall thickness to hollow it out. So uh, I'm going to go to the Modify uh, tab here to the Shell tool, and I'm going to choose the body here from my tree. I want body one. I want to choose the entire object so I don't have an open face. If I selected just one of the faces, it would try to make that the open face. Uh, I'm going to choose body one, and I'm going to give it, let's say, a uh, three millimeter thickness. So uh, it seems to have succeeded. I'm going to say OK. And uh, now let's take a look. Let's try to uh, hit the Inspect tab here to do a section analysis. And now let's choose, let's say, the front face here to, to cut a section here to see what's going on. So it's generated a three millimeter wall all across, which I mean, is thicker than what a plastic part would be. But it's just this is just for a for this demo. It'd probably be in the range of maybe 1.2, 1.5 millimeters for a, a standard plastic part. Uh, but now we've hollowed it out. So uh, I'm going to say cancel to cancel the section analysis. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to split uh, this object by using uh, these lines marked by this particular um, object. So uh, what I want to do is I want to turn these two lines into two surfaces and use these surfaces as cutting tools to slice this part into three sections and then I can apply different materials to it, uh, etc. So uh, I'm going to start a new uh, sketch and I'm going to start the sketch here on the side plane. I'm going to go and say look at. And what I want to do is I want to copy all of the lines that form these, these two curves. So I'm going to go to the project tool, which is here in the create panel, project include or project here, or just the shortcut P. And I'm going to select this entire center face. The reason being when I do this and I click OK, uh, and let me hide this body to show you. It actually copied um, every single line that forms this this particular face. Uh, I don't need this particular one. I can just uh, delete this one. Uh, and now I have this continuous line that forms the two top and bottom sections uh, of this particular face. So um, what I want to do now is I want to extend these surfaces, create some cutting tools for me to be able to do, to do this. With, in some cases, you can actually use just the line to create a cutting tool with these complex um, lines like this that, has, that are formed by several segments. Sometimes that will fail, so I'll just create a surface, and that seems to be a little bit more uh, foolproof. So I will go to the surface tool here on the top panel, and I'm going to get all the surfacing tools here um, that allow me to work with uh, non-solid objects as well. So uh, I'm going to say extrude. And normally, if you extrude a solid, you would need a closed area. But if you extrude uh, here in the surface um, tab, you can actually extrude just a line. So I'm going to Command or Control click all of these sections to then extrude a line that goes Sorry, extrude a surface that goes along this line. So if I pull on this, you'll see that I start extruding just a thin surface, no thickness. I'm going to turn on the body one. Uh, and then I'm going to go to direction and choose symmetric here on my extrude tool panel. And that creates a surface that extends past the object, which is what I want for this cutting tool. Uh, and it's not extending past the front and back, but I can easily fix that by going to the modify tab and uh, clicking on extend. And then that allows me to select just an edge. Uh, I would choose the extent type to be natural to follow the curve that's already there in that surface. And just extend that tool past that. I'm going to repeat that. Right click, repeat last tool here. Select the front edge and extend this surface here. And this is going to uh, be a nice cutting tool to section off the mouse. So I'll go to the modify tool here in the surface uh, tab, and I'm going to choose Split Body. Uh, then it's going to ask me to choose a body to split. I'm going to choose the mouse body, and it's going to ask me for a splitting tool. I'm going to choose this surface that I just created. And I'm, to choose the whole thing, you might want to choose it from the tree here. And uh, if it's a tool that's not extending past all the edges, you can click on Extend Splitting, extend splitting Tool. In my case, I've already extended the, the tool past it, the boundaries where it needs to be. So this should work just like that. So uh, I clicked OK, and it worked a little bit. Now let me hide this surface here on the tree. And the result is now I have two bodies. I have the bottom section of this mouse that was shelled out, and now I have the 
the top section. And now I can go and, for example, um, I can uh, go and fill it this edge here, let's say, by uh, half a millimeter. And now I can hide this, show this part. I can fill it this edge as well, half a millimeter, this outer edge. Actually, I might need to go smaller here because it has a nice sort of uh, very sharp angle at the front, so it, it won't be able to do such a large fillet. So what I've done here now is I've created this nice crease between these two parts, which should look great when you render this part. There's a clear division uh, between these two sections. So now I'm going to just repeat the same process for this bottom uh, line to cut this uh, bottom section away. Okay, so I added, I repeated the process here for the the piece in the bottom, cut it out, added a little fillet to the bottom piece. And now I have three different sections of my mouse, and I can differentiate these with different materials. So let's try and uh, actually jump really quickly into the render tab to see how this um, surface looks now that we've added these fillets and we've differentiated these uh, objects. So I can actually go into my materials library. I'm going to open the appearance panel here. Uh, I'm going to go quickly into the um, paint tab and I'm going to open the metallic paint library. Uh, and I can go ahead and choose, let's say, a um, dark gray paint maybe for the bottom piece. And I can choose maybe a silver paint here for this middle object just by dragging them in place. Uh, and perhaps uh, a color here for the top. So maybe this metallic red color here for the top of the object. So uh, we're going to go into rendering in our next installment of this basic tutorial. Uh, but let me jump back here into the design tab to just complete this uh, with one final operation. Uh, we're not going to do the entire assembly for the mouse, but another thing that I wanted to show you is how you can easily um, add another feature here. So I'm going to add a offset plane here from the construct uh, tool panel. I'm going to create a plane that sits above my surface here. Uh, and I'm going to create a hole here for my uh, scrolling um, wheel. So I'm going to create a sketch here on this new uh, plane that I just created. So I now have a top view here. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the create uh, menu here on my sketch tool box and I'm going to choose a slot tool center to center slot and just to have a better reference here I'm going to go back to my canvases and turn them on so now I can see where this uh, scroll wheel sits I'm going to uh, snap here to the origin to get centered on this my uh, canvas is not completely centered here uh, but it should give me a good idea of how big this should be let's say this is nine millimeter and then I'm going to give it an eight millimeter diameter. Excellent. Now I'm going to repeat creating a center to center slot. I'm also going to snap here to the center and I'm going to go outside my form. And then I'm going to go all the way to where this cut extends. I'm going to say this is 50 millimeters long, uh, single click, and then uh, maybe 0.75 millimeters thick. Excellent. And I'm going to go and choose all of these um, close profiles here. Control or command click all of them to select them all. And I'm going to do an extruded cut uh, by tapping on E for extrude. And if I drag this and cut past uh, the surfaces here, uh, I would do the cut that I want. I'd also, I would also cut through the other objects here on screen. But I can actually go to my extrude control panel and uh, open this thing called objects to cut. And I can deselect objects that I don't want to be affected by this operation. So I can just select a, to only affect uh, the body for the top portion of the mouse. 
and I can click on OK. So now I've generated this uh, space for my scroll wheel, and I also created a uh, gap so my left and right clicks are separated as this little plastic piece deforms. So there you go. I might jump back into the render tab just to visualize this a little bit better. I'm going to hide my canvases. And here it is, a very basic mouse with uh, complex surfaces. And again, you can invest as much time as you want in making this completely uh, perfect and uh, having perfect reflections and tangential curves uh, between forms. Um, and uh, here it is. I hope you were able to follow and hope you're creating some interesting uh, surfacing after this. See you next time.